welcome to the September 15th edition of Global Nashville with Carl Dean. I'm Patrick Ryan, President of the Tennessee World Affairs Council. Tonight we have a uh, great program. Uh, Mayor Dean will be talking with uh, representatives of the Global Young Professionals of, uh, of Nashville. Uh, Mayor Dean, uh, good to see you again. Uh, back from hopefully rested and uh, ready to go after a little uh, fall vacation. Yep, good to be back and good to see you. Well, let's uh, let's jump right in. And before we do, we're going to uh, uh, just update people on uh, some of the programs that we have uh, coming their way. We started the election 2020 uh, program, and I'll uh, mention that this Thursday we have a really terrific uh, panel that uh, we invite you to participate in. Uh, Dr. Breck Walker from the World Affairs Council Board will be hosting a panel on the, the foreign policy cha challenges. Uh, faced by these <clears throat> these countries, uh, Russia, North Korea, and Afghanistan, and really a, a terrific uh, lineup of panelists. Ambassador Christopher Hill, who has been a U.S. ambassador to about five or six countries, including South Korea, and he was the Deputy Assistant Secretary of State for Near Eastern Affairs, so he's an uh, expert in the uh, North Korean uh, situation. Minister Counselor Annie Forsheimer uh, served as the Deputy Chief of Mission in the Embassy in Kabul, and as the Deputy Assistant Secretary of State for Afghanistan. So she's gonna talk about the challenges there. And Dr. Svetlana Sarvinskaya is a Russia expert and we'll be talking about uh, what the United States faces in terms of uh, dealing with uh, Russia in the, the coming uh, administration. Uh, also tomorrow, uh, just a reminder, our weekly news review, Ambassador Dick Bowers, uh, Dr. Breck Walker and I will uh, go through the uh, the current topics in the news. And then here's a, a quick uh, list of what else is coming in the election 2020 series. You can go to the uh, tnwac.org slash calendar, uh, our website, uh, the calendar lists uh, all of these events, and you can sign up uh, for those. So um, that's it in terms of what's, uh, what's coming up. I mentioned uh, as part of the election 2020, uh, process. We're also going to have a couple of uh, uh, watch parties, and we'll be talking about that as part of the conversation tonight on the global young professionals. So uh, with no further ado, let me uh, introduce uh, our guest tonight. Uh, first, uh, we have uh, with us, um, and I think they'll be joining us on camera here uh, very soon, uh, we have uh, Bronte Prinz, who's on our uh, Tennessee World Affairs Council board. She's an attorney with the Southern Land Company. She's head of the legal department there. They're uh, based in Green Hills. They uh, are a real estate development firm. Uh, Bronte originally hails from Toronto, has spent some time in New York and has been in Nashville for about three years. Welcome Bronte, thanks uh, for being with us. Thank you for having me, Pat, happy to be here. And we uh, will also be talking with Mary Love Richardson, who is uh, the owner of Rosemary and Finch, a uh, event-based florist. Um, and she has been uh, running that business for eight years, Nashville native, Belmont University. Uh, and she is an intern on the uh, Tennessee World Affairs Council board, uh, also a graduate of the Young Leaders Council. And that's how she uh, became acquainted with the, the World Affairs Council. So uh, welcome, uh, ladies. Uh, we're so happy to, to be able to talk about the Global Young Professionals organization here in Nashville. And I will turn it over to, uh, to Mayor Dean. Well, thank you, Pat. And um, welcome, Bronnie and Mary Love. Um, I guess my first question, I'll just open this to either one of you who'd like to answer. Tell us about the Young Professionals and um, what the organization's goal is, how many people are in it, what do you do, um, and what your affiliation has been with the World Affairs Council. Sure, so I will jump in on this one. I became affiliated with the World Affairs Council after completing the Young Leaders Program here in Nashville. And so the World Affairs Council stood out to me as the type of organization I wanted to contribute to. And when I joined, Pat and I got together and talked about the demographics, the types of people that were typically coming to World Affairs Council's events. And in our discussion, we talked about how the group was hitting a lot of college age students and a lot of people that were in their later years, but that there was a significant gap from the around 21 to 40 year old range 
where their attendees just weren't coming to events. And so Pat and I decided to come up with a young professionals group that could be connected to the World Affairs Council uh, with a focus on net networking and connecting people, many of whom are new to Nashville since this is such an evolving city. Uh, but it is a, a, an affiliate of World Affairs Council. We call ourselves YP Global, but we envision a name change at some point. Um, and unfortunately, we were really ramping up and, and collecting new members right when the pandemic hit. And so our progress has been a little slow over the last year, but we're hopeful that in the coming months when we get back to in-person events, that we can garner some attention and get some new people involved, not only for our own programming, but so that we can actually attract more young professionals to the World Affairs Council's general programming. Uh, Mary Love, do you have anything to add? And maybe you could tell us um, how you define young. Um, <laughs> or what are, what are uh, young leaders or young professionals? <laughs> um, I think that's a great summary. I'm, I'm new to the group too, so I'm learning. Um, but, you know, young professionals, I guess that age range you talked about that, you know, we're not in our 20s anymore or, you know, maybe in late 20s, but also more established in our careers and um, just wanting to be involved in our community and give back. So, I will say one time in one of our very early events, somebody showed up and she said, listen, I'm 52, but I feel young. I'm new to my career and I want to be here. And I said, that is phenomenal. We want Love. you here. <laughs> we very purposefully have not put an age range to define young, because if you feel young and you want to come to our events, we welcome you. So if I show up, I just can't complain about back pain or, uh, you know, <laughs> sore from exercising or something like that. Exactly. Um, so we what, that. <laughs> what is the tie? Um, do both of you have an interest in world affairs or, or what led you, you um, you're on the board now and you're an intern with the, with the board, Mary Love. Um, why are you involved with the World Affairs Council? What led you to, to our organization? Mary Love, you wanna go first? Sure. <laughs> um, so yes, very interested in world affairs. Um, I grew up traveling and that has been a huge part of my life. The one time I've actually moved away from Nashville was to be an au pair in Switzerland. Um, and just always have been so impacted by knowing what's going on in the world. And especially in the last few years when we've had such wild times in our country politically, I feel like it's been an, an encouragement to be more involved and to be more educated. Um, so I've been personally working really hard to be educated. And so going through Young Leaders Council um, and searching for a place to have an internship Tennessee World Affairs Council is really appealing for that, that it's exactly, you know, what I think we all need is to be largely aware of what's going on, so. And of course, there's the, the tie with the World Affairs Council to Belmont University, your, yeah, your that's school. Yeah, right. So you get a chance to get back over there on campus. Um, well, that's good, that's good. And what part of Switzerland were you in our parent? I was in Zurich, just like right on Zurich Safe. It was beautiful. Yeah, well, it's, it's that's got to be the prettiest country. Oh, yes, best mountains in the world. Yeah, Bronte, how about you? What, uh, what, how did you end up at the World Affairs Council, and what's your interest? So I grew up in Toronto, which is an incredibly diverse and multicultural city, um, and so I was exposed to a lot of different interesting people growing up, and and it was always part of of my life to just know what was important to other cultures, what was going on in other countries. So many of my friends had parents who'd been born in other countries and weren't Native Canadians. And when I went to law school, I had a, a romantic vision of the type of lawyer that I wanted to become, and then ultimately became a corporate lawyer. Um, and so in my career, I don't really have an outlet for exploring global international affairs and issues. I work for a real estate development company, and I love it. And I'm very happy with what I do but I'm missing that outlet. And so when I came across the World Affairs Council, I was very interested, very impressed, and found that it would be a great way for me to stay involved, stay attuned to what's going on in the world, despite the fact that I don't really get to do that in my day-to-day -day job. 
Yeah. Well, Toronto is, is, is an incredibly diverse city. Um, and Canada has an attitude, very positive attitude toward immigration. It's mm -hmm. obviously part of the Canadian history. And I think uh, most Canadians would say it's going to be a huge part of their future. Um, Nashville, which you've uh, been here a while, you're a Nashvillian now. Um, we, have, um, we have become a city that has become increasingly diverse over the last 15, uh, 18 years or so. And I, I always have thought there's a lot we can learn from Toronto, but do you have any thoughts about the diversity you find in Nashville and how that is, um, how that is perceived? And, and, uh, we, and, and I guess there's this, the city's a lot more interesting in my mind than it used to be. I think something that strikes me as being very interesting about Nashville, and I have to say that in my life, I've lived in Toronto, Los Angeles, and New York. So Nashville is a much smaller city than anywhere I've ever lived. Something that stood out to me though, is that there are certain pockets of the city that are extremely diverse. And then there are other pockets that are very, very homogenous. And it, that's been an interesting challenge for me, moving from my first few months in town, I lived downtown, was able to experience a lot more diversity, lots of interesting people, some different restaurants and cuisines. And I've since moved out to West Nashville. And I find that there's really no diversity in my neighborhood. Um, and it, it just is what, what it is. But it's interesting to me that Nashville has these pockets. And I think with time that will change. But as things stand today, we're still dealing with some pretty homogenous pockets of people living in certain places. Well, there's been a a very much of an increase over the last, again, 10 to 15 years of the number of foreign born folks in Nashville. I mean, you look at the Kurdish population, um, you look at the diversity of people who are attracted to the city because of the strength of the economy, because of entrepreneurship, whether in, in your business or whether in, um, in the music business or healthcare in particular, um, a lot of new people are, are, are coming into the city. And I think it's absolutely key for the city to always be um, a friendly, welcoming city. I mean, that's the future. I mean, the cities that are really going to succeed, that are going to be great cities, are cities that are going to embrace diversity um, and be known for the diversity of all sorts uh, of people. I mean, that's what makes cities a compelling place to live. Um, and I think Toronto, as I said, is a, is a good example of a city that has benefited and, um, from its diversity. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, tell us, um, tell us about some of the programs you have. Um, I'm fascinated by the, um, by the trivia tournaments that you do. And there's a tournament coming up in October. Um, who wants to handle that one, the trivia question? Round tape. All right. <laughs> so we cannot take too much credit for the trivia because it is a combined effort with various different World Affairs Councils. And so, and Pat, correct me if I'm wrong on this, but this upcoming trivia, which begins in October, will start with a, a local round and then we'll progress to national. I believe that's in conjunction with another World Affairs Council. Yeah, that's that, that's right, Bronte. Uh, we, we did this in the springtime and it was, it was very popular and uh, a lot of people wanted to see it again. Uh, and this is uh, not just the Tennessee World Affairs Council, although the first three weeks of the tournament that uh, will be scheduled for October, uh, those will be the Tennessee tournament. And then in November, two of the uh, winning contestants or teams, uh, this can be a team, uh, team sport, will go on to a national championship match with World Affairs Councils from around the country. So uh, the idea is that we, uh, we enjoy uh, a couple of weeks of doing uh, a Tennessee-based uh, competition and then send our uh, winners on to, uh, to the, the national round. And, and so uh, is this the question the questions were primarily uh, global affairs awareness oriented. Right. So this is all done on Zoom now, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The, and, and, uh, and, and, and did you have the, the tournaments, the, the trivia tournaments before we went into Zoom world? You know, we did have, we had a, a separate trivia event, which was very fun. Um, we, we had it at Von Elrods in Germantown. It was not sponsored by the World Affairs Council. It was a separate YP Global event. 
But I do think that that generated some interest and got people excited about this new virtual round of trivia. I can't speak for the whole World Affairs Council, but I, I have a suspicion that when we go back to normal, that the World Affairs Council would be interested in sponsoring an event in a bar where there's beer served. I, just, just a guess, just a guess. Okay. That, might be, <laughs> that might be out there. Well, tell me what the format is. I mean, uh, so th there are those who love trivia. Obviously, it's, uh, it's done uh, all over the country now in cities. What, what, how does, what's the format for this? Uh, Mayor Dean, we're still we're still building that. The, the format in the uh, previous iteration was the competitors added their scores over three weeks, and then the top two scores went on to the national competition. I think uh, that discouraged some who may not have done well in the first week or the second week, and they didn't uh, tend to show up in the final week. So we want to uh, even this out so that uh, everybody enjoys uh, three weeks of of the competition, and, and we'll worry about how we we uh, sort out the winners uh, in, in a, a conversation that we'll have among the, the planning group. Um, but it's, uh, it's basically, uh, Bronte, do you recall, I think it was uh, 40 questions in four, uh, four rounds of 10 questions each. And mm -hmm. uh, the, the, there were theme, certain themes, uh, but the overall topics were in the realm of uh, world affairs. So. Uh, people should keep up with their uh, current events on the news. And uh, those will be the weeks of um, the 11th of October, the 18th, and the 25th. And uh, Bronte, I think we did we circle Wednesday nights of those weeks? Or are we still uh, looking at the calendar? Wednesday, so that it gives people a break midway through the week. Um, so, yes, if we can do Wednesday, I think that would be great. Okay, so uh, people should just check the calendar on the World Affairs Council website within the next couple of days and we will have definitive plans uh, on the, the timing and, and how the, uh, the teams will work. But uh, people can get together in teams, especially if they're in their own uh, pandemic bubble together uh, to work together. Uh, we use a, a program where the answers, uh, you get more points if you answer quickly. So the, the key is uh, not just accuracy, but speed. And I think that uh, that dissuades people from while they're trying to figure out the answer, uh, checking Google on their telephone. Uh, so uh, there is there is some advantage uh, to those who are quick on the button. So it's a little like a college bowl set up and um, how hard are the questions? Um, hard. <laughs> <laughs> You need a good knowledge of what's going on in the world. I, um, you know, among uh, present company, we're, we may be more oriented towards following uh, world affairs than, than the average uh, participant. But I, I don't think, um, you know, Bronte, I'll, I'll go with your judgment of, of hard, but uh, there, there were some, some questions there that weren't too tough to figure out. And does it help to have a good background in, um... I don't know, diplomatic, international history, geography, know the capitals, know the borders. There'll, there'll be stuff. there'll be some uh, some geography and, and capitals and uh, and those sorts of things. But I think for the most part, current events is uh, uh, would be a, a key uh, indicator to uh, to brush up on to check uh, check the news more frequently in the next couple of weeks than, than you might have uh, done in the past. Mm -hmm. I think that's that's part of what we're trying to do is encourage people to become more aware of what's going on in the world. Good. Well, tell me about, um, you're going to have uh, young, uh, young professional events around the uh, Belmont presidential debate um, on October 22nd. And what is that going to be? That is a phenomenal question <laughs> and something that we are still thinking through and we're actually open to feedback on because we want to have watch parties. They have to be virtual given the current climate, but we want to make sure that they're interesting and that it's not just a collection of people sitting on Zoom, watching TV, not really interacting with each other. So we are in the process of brainstorming and trying to figure out a way to do that and have these watch parties, but make them as engaging as possible. 
Bronte, Brian, Brian, that might be a good time to talk about uh, your interest in forming a planning committee. Yes. Because the, all of these questions that uh, Mayor Dean is asking us go right to the heart of uh, planning for these events. And we're, we're looking for people to get involved. Yeah, we recently made a decision uh, to appoint a committee of planners to assist with YP Global and our upcoming programming. And so we're envisioning a group of five people, two of whom are present today, me and Mary Love. Um, so three open spots for people who might be interested in assisting us with programming, thinking through ways to make YP Global a better, more engaged group, ways to connect it back to World Affairs Council. And I think most importantly for right now, ways to avoid this Zoom fatigue that a lot of us are experiencing. We're so starved for in-person events and to interact with each other. But unfortunately, I think we have a couple more months of keeping things virtual. Um, so if there's anybody out there who's interested or if you know of someone that might be interested, please encourage them to reach out to us. We have an email address, yp at tnwac.org. Um, and they can feel free to reach out to me or to Mary Love as well, just individually. Um, but we're really excited about it. We think it's going to be a great change to how we do programming and how we think through our events. Good. Sounds great. So I, I commend you all for uh, hanging in there with the, with, the, with the virus and all the social distancing we've had to do. It's a little hard to start an organization um, without having direct contact with people. Um, but you know, it, it will it will end at some point. Mm -hmm. um, Pat, do you have any questions you want to? We we do have one one question that came in from a Facebook Live um, via Twitter, and it was uh, how to become more involved in the networking uh, side of this, and what kinds of people uh, are involved already. So. We have a, a pretty solid, small network, it's still growing, um, but a good network of people from all different types of careers, different backgrounds, different ages that have been regularly coming to our events, which is wonderful. And so I think it presents a great opportunity for people who are interested in making new connections, who potentially are new to and are trying to expand their social networks. And I will say it's tough right now because we can't all meet at a bar and have a drink because even though we're not side by side in person, we still have the ability to network and to make connections and, and get to know each other. Good. Bronte, you, you faded there a little bit, but I think uh, the gist of it was that uh, it's, it's open to all and uh, we're, we're anxious, uh, not we. I'd, Carl might slip in, uh, but I don't think I'm, I'm going to uh, be showing up any, anytime soon for the, the in-person events. And, and I agree, it, it, not just for young professionals, but across the board, we're all anxious to get back to in-person events. Uh, the World Affairs Council has, uh, has pivoted from in person to webinars like this one and and we all uh, enjoy getting together and talking and i think we've increased the uh, the reach of people we can bring in and, and have these conversations uh, but clearly we all want to get back to uh, some in-person activities yeah and i would think that uh, folks out there who um, love to travel and are interested in seeing the world um, really can't do that can't aren't we there are many countries we cannot go to. Um, so this is a great opportunity perhaps to learn more and associate with people in Nashville um, and develop who have common interests. So that, that, that's wonderful. Mm -hmm. All right, any final thoughts, Mary Love, on World Affairs Council or? I'm just thrilled to be a part of it and hoping that we can get together soon and that we will have people show up Bronte and I are excited to have people joining us and hopefully doing something fun to make it through the next few months when we're still on Zoom, so. Good, good. Bronte, how about you? It's 
funny that you mentioned not being able to go uh, to certain countries because I actually can't go back to Canada. Um, I could because I'm a citizen, but it would involve a 14 day quarantine. Right. And I think I would come back to Nashville without a job. So <laughs> I can't really do that. Um, but it's a weird time. And I think we're all well, stuck at home. The Toronto all... Blue Jays are, are not playing in Canada. They're, there's no major league going on right. in Canada right now. But hockey, yeah, it's hockey, just, took, hockey went yeah. on, right? Yes. Well, yeah, all hockey, the Americans uh, came yeah, everybody's in Canada, two cities. Except for exactly. the Preds, they came back early. <laughs> so it's an odd time, but I think it's a great time for people to join this new group involved, um, get acquainted with the people that are already in the group so that in a few months, when the world is back to normal and we pick up our programming, you're already involved and we can just keep having these fantastic network, net, networking events and be involved with the World Affairs Council. Good, good. Well, let me thank you um, for both your service on the board, Bronte, and your intern service on the board, Mary Love. Um, and your help to the World Affairs Council. I mean, obviously we wanna see the World Affairs Council grow here in Nashville and in Tennessee and um, having young professionals like yourself, um, I think is the key moving forward. Um, I'm fascinated by the trivia. You know, you ought to have a category on Canadian history. That'd be one, you could, you could, you could ace that and uh, <laughs> be on your way. Um, well, well, thank you, Pat. Anything else to cover? Yeah, I'll just mention that uh, if there are people interested in uh, young professionals or the World Affairs Council, and and uh, this is, is probably a, a good time to mention that uh, we are a membership organization. If you uh, like what we're uh, what we're into and we're, what we're all about, uh, take a look at the tnwac.org website where you can become a member or make a contribution to the work we're doing. We're a a nonprofit uh, organization, and right now is a tough time for nonprofits. So we appreciate uh, any help that uh, we can get from uh, from you as far as becoming a member or, or making a gift. And if you do want to know more about the World Affairs Council, about the YP program, and anything else, uh, visit uh, tnwac.org and sign up for the newsletter. And we will uh, make sure that you're kept up to date on these uh, developing stories, like what the uh, what the trivia contest is going to be like. It, it sounds like somebody in Mayor Dean's household will be uh, playing in that. So we'll, uh, we'll see how many more people we can get in uh, uh, the, uh, the watch parties as well. Uh, that's it, Mayor Dean. Uh, thanks uh, once again for hosting tonight. Oh, thank you. And, and thank you, Mary Love. Thank you, Brownie, for being with us. And um, have a great rest of the week. Enjoy the fall weather and enjoy uh, this beautiful city.